Hello, everyone. Oh, let me get my thing here. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully you can hear me. If you can hear me, post in the comment below. Hello, I can hear you. Um, and if you're here live, it would be awesome if you could do hashtag live. And if you're watching the replay, put in um, hashtag replay. And then that way I know like who's seeing what, but I'm really excited for you today. Hopefully you can understand me. I'm a little congested today. I still have this lingering cough going and I might have to <clears throat> mute um, just in case because, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, you can hear it. If I have to cough really badly or whatever, then I, um, I might mute myself, but we're going to make it through. I just didn't want to put this off because it's like, I hear it over and over again. People are dealing with, they keep, you know, they might have all the leads coming in. I get lots of, you know, people have lots of problems and they call me about their business, problems about their business. But, um, you know, one is like, how do you get those leads coming in? How do you get the right people finding you, calling you and paying you? Right. Um, the other is like, once you've got the leads coming in, the quality leads, how do you enroll them now into what you're offering? And so, um, you know, a lot of times um, you're on a call and, and you get your, you know, you get to your pitch and you're about to like tell them exactly what you do or whatever. And your prospect tells you, you know, I got to think about it or I got to ask my husband first or my spouse, you know, be a, the opposite. Um, or I need, you know, oh, that's a lot of money. I just don't have that money. Or let me check where I can find that money, right? There's all these objections instead of them just actually enrolling into whatever you're, you're helping them with, right? And that's what we're going to talk about today is how, um, <clears throat> how can you, how you can best deal with these objections, okay? So in the past, objections were like a, de a declaration sort of of that a buyer just simply wasn't ready, okay? But now we've got these sophisticated buyers now, right? Um, people they're, they're, don't want that sleazy, cheesy sales spiel, right? That used to, that they, people weren't really, hadn't caught on to it yet. And nobody wants to do that either, right? Like it just feels cheesy and sleazy. And we don't want to do that. We want to um, come across as authentic and or just, you know, be, be authentic and genuinely help people, right? I mean, you're offering um, some service, some expertise, and you're helping people get results, right? This is, you've got a service-based um, business. Um, so there's people out there that need you. And then if they need you, why are they not buying from you, right? Why are they going to the competition or whatever? And there's a lot of things that go into that. But we're going to discuss, um, you know, the part where you've got the person on the phone, um, they're, they, they, they need what you've got. And then instead of simply buying what you're putting out there, they come up with an objection. Like I said, either I got to think about it. I got to talk to my spouse. I don't have, I got to look for the money or I don't have the money. Right. These are all objections. And it's like, how do you overcome them? Right. And get people to, um, enroll. So then this is because mainly it's because they're not certain, Okay, or confident enough in what you are selling. Okay, somewhere along the way, somewhere along in that conversation, they're not convinced, right? They're not feeling like this is the right thing for them, right? Or um, they might be like, this is the right thing for me, but they're not committed enough to making a change. They might be con too comfortable where they're at. They're, they want to stay in that comfort zone and they don't want to um, you know, get past that. And they're, they're not as committed as they could be to to resolving it okay um or they don't believe that you can help them resolve it maybe they can you know maybe they've got time to figure it out whatever it is i mean there's lots of different things that go into it right <clears throat> action is usually a buyer's defense response to that uncertainty okay so in the past you need to um you maybe need needed to memorize like all these different possible responses to these objections but the problem is the client doesn't feel heard or understood. Okay. Um, that's really what's going on. Okay. So simply put, just giving people like some canned response to their objection is not all that effective anymore either. Okay. So, so it's kind of, it's like a pickup line, right? Um, most of which are way off too. Okay. So we want to, again, it's all about being authentic. It's all about being heard, being understood, um, because those canned responses just, they don't work any, they don't work anymore. Again, it just comes off as kind of sleazy and cheesy. 
because today's buyers, what they really want are meaningful conversations, right? Um, I mean, there's all this like stuff going on and everything's so fake. Like now it's like when, when someone can really um, have a meaningful conversation with them and you're being authentic and you can genuinely help them. Um, and then it's just communicating the value around what you have to offer in such an effective way that it just easily guides them into that sale, right? So there's no like magical line that you can just throw at your clients to get them to enroll. So just be aware of, you know, what kind of conversation are you having and why um, you're asking people to hire you, okay? Have this awareness, okay? Because it's going to make a difference. And what I mean is like, <clears throat> there's those who um, they, they, they flaunt their lifestyle, right? They've got the cool car and the cool mansion or private jet or designer everything like Kardashians comes to mind, right? It's like, and fundamentally they're saying like, hire me or buy what I have so you can be like me. So you can have all the things that you want and be like me, right? That's one type of message that some put out, right? And then there's those that um, like, they just bombard you with free content. They're like, here, do this, do this, do this, you know, like this is free, free, free content. And they just like give everything away. Like, see how, see how much I know, right? Like this is, this is, um, that is, so they're saying like, hire me because, you know, I've given you all this free information now. Now you owe me. I had a conversation with someone the other day and, and they said that to me and I was like, wow, interesting. She's like, you know, I've got a business to run and, and, you know, I'm giving them all this stuff for free. And it's like, I need to get paid for what I have to offer. And that's true. But again, it's like, you don't want to, that's not the really the right approach, right? I believe the best one um, that works the best and the one that you should be saying is hire me because you're stuck here. You know, you're stuck here. You're suffering from something or you need help, right? Um, on one end, like, it's like, you can't get past like this certain thing. You're stuck in this one end. And then you know you want to get to the other end in the quickest, easiest, most efficient way possible. And I know how to do that. I know how to get you that result, right? So for example, um, let's say, you, you know, you're 50 pounds overweight and do you want me to help you lose um, all that weight in three months or less? Yes, right? I don't know if that's very healthy, but <laughs> you know what you know what I mean, right? Or you want to scale your business to six figures and you can't seem to get the right people um finding you and calling you or you're out there like cold calling or you're out there doing all this like exhausting like posting and nobody's answering you right like nobody wants to know more or whatever or maybe you do have um that those people that are contacting you but you just can't get them over the threshold which is what we're talking about today and so the third one um it's an easy decision to make right it's like I have a problem, you can get me the result and you can get it for me easier and quicker than if I were to do it myself because I have either no idea or whatever, right? So there's definitely less objections to expect in that third scenario, right? So many objections come up simply because you're having the wrong conversations, right? If you're, if you're not um, helping people to face the real truth, okay? And ignoring what their real problems are, and not just the symptoms of those problems, because there's a difference, right? Then you're having like these kind of superficial conversations and that's what leads to many objections, right? You gotta go deep in the conversations, okay? And it doesn't mean like you wanna like dig pain or like, you know, push pain or anything like that. I hear that a lot too. It's like, oh, we gotta, we gotta drive the pain to get to, you know, thing. It's like, no, I mean, that that can leave people feeling like terrible, right? So it's just having those real conversations, just knowing what questions to ask to get to the right, um, the right, the real problem, the real problem that's going on, or the real thing that that's that they're suffering from, or why they can't for whatever get the result that they're looking for, right? And that's the that's the first reason. Um, <clears throat> why you would get these objections is because there's no clarity on the real problem because you're not asking the, the right questions to figure out what that is, right? So that's your job. Your job is to ask the right questions to uncover what's really going on so that you can help them, okay? So if you're not clear on your problem or the problem that you solve for people, right? Um, your marketing is also going to be unclear and your clients are going to be unclear on the problem that you can solve as well. Right. You got to be clear first and then you got to be clear on how can you communicate that effectively. Right. 
And sometimes we just go ahead and, and we talk about how great we are, or how trained we are, or how capable we are to get them the result. But at the end of the day, it's not really about you. Okay, it's not really about that. And that's why those objections come up in the end, right? It's about how the problem is, is you know, um, not only going to get worse as the days go by and like what they need to do now to fix it once and for all. Um, in an in enrollment conversation, right, you want to talk about the client's problems and then how it's affecting their daily life. Okay, how's that showing up for them? Right. But don't talk too much about yourself. Don't talk at all about yourself, really. You know, it's not about you. It's not going to, you don't want to convince people, right? Because again, that can come across as kind of desperate and needy, right? And nobody wants to work with anybody who's that either, right? So um, it doesn't come across as you, you know, being the expert and knowing, you know, in order to help them, right? So some tend to believe that if they tell people how smart they are and how, you know, and all their certifications, then people would want to buy, but it just doesn't work. Okay, and mainly it, it just, it doesn't work because they're not, um, it doesn't address the, the second reason for the objection, which is the certainty. <clears throat> Hold on, I'm gonna get a sip of water. Okay, so if you're with me, let me know in the comments below that you're here with me. And oh yeah, and if you're watching on YouTube um, too, please like and subscribe so we can get um, those going. I'm actually having a competition with my eight-year-old son of who can get the most subscribers. He's doing like his own gaming thing or whatever. Um, and I'm like, okay, let's see, let's who can get to the first, you know, whatever. Um, so anyway, back to this. Uh, the you know, uh, we were talking about the, oh yeah, the certainty, right? So the client doesn't have that certainty that you can solve the problem. And if they don't think that, you know, you're certain that you can solve the problem. And if you're, you know, projecting that, right? How does that come across? Right? So the client needs to be certain that the problem um, needs to be solved now and that you're the best person to help them. Hey, Heidi, how's it going? Awesome. Let's see what you say. Can you mention what was the first objection again? Yeah, so the, the typical objections that people get at the end of a call when they're trying to enroll someone, hey, Viola, into whatever you're offering. First is like, I need to think about it. Um, or I mean, not first, but one of them, one of the most common ones is, oh, I need to think about it. I don't want to buy right now from you. I need to think about it first, right? I need to pray about it. I get that one a lot too. Um, or there's, uh, I need to, um, I need to, I don't have the money or it's too expensive or it's, uh, I need to find, find the money or I need to talk to my spouse. Okay. All very legitimate things, but usually it's a smoke screen, um, for just, I don't want to do it. Right. Like if they don't, if they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it. They just want to hurt your feelings and say no. Um, so, and usually it's because there's, um, it's uncertainty, right? There's like that, uh, there it's that, that commitment level isn't there and they're not certain that you're going to get the results for them. Right. So I think that answers your question. Um, so yeah. So how can you give them that certainty, right? How can you get them to that? Right. And how can you avoid the objections before they even come up? Like there's a certain way um, to do it where you can eliminate the objections before the end of the call. There's certain things, right. And there's, I do tons of training on this um, in my program with my clients, but you know, it's a process, right. And it's the very last thing that you can, that you need to do because you need to know what questions to ask them throughout everything that, um, that builds up to that. Right. So anyway, when you describe the problem better than they can, okay, this is what helps with the certainty is that people will automatically assume you know the solution already. Okay. So even if you're a bum on the street, but you can describe what's happening better than that person can describe what's happening, they automatically assume you're an authority. They automatically assume that you know what you're talking about um, and that you can solve the problem because you've described it even better than they could, but they've been experiencing it for so long. Does that make sense? So again, by focusing on the problem during the conversation, you demonstrate automatically your deep understanding of the problem and then how it shows up in your client's life, right? Or your, your potential client's life, right? You, you, if you can describe it, 
better than they can and they feel deeply understood, deeply um, like, yeah, this person gets it, right? Then they're just gonna automatically assume that you can solve it. Does that make sense? So by asking relevant questions and then just getting deep into that problem, again, not the surface, but the deep, right? Getting deep into the problem that your client um, deep, like your client right away just becomes sure of you, right? Just comes, it's like, oh yeah, of course, they totally get it, right? Without even asking where you went to school or how long you've been coaching or doing whatever you've been doing, whatever your service is, right? It's like, doesn't matter. It, it's just like, this person gets it. This person understands better than I could even articulate, right? I didn't even realize that this is what the real problem was because they tend to like sugarcoat things and you know, kind of glaze over, oh, it's not that bad, oh, it's okay, right? Um, and to cope, right? A lot of people, they might be like, they might be suffering and it might be affecting their lives in, in many ways. Like I'll get on calls and people will say some, some of the most devastating things and then giggle after it. And I'm like, wait a minute, what, you just said that you're gonna, you know, I don't know, I'm, I could be really extreme. You're gonna be homeless in two weeks and you just giggled about it. Like that's pretty severe, you know, like why, why, how are you, why are you giggling? Right. And it's because they're softening things. So they don't feel so bad because they know how terrible things could get. Right. Um, so depending on what you do, like, even if it's like a really bad toothache or, you know, they've been suffering from it from years, right. Like they're, they've got to cope. So, and maybe they've been burned a few times and haven't solved it. Right. But if you, if they go in and they're like, oh yeah, this is exactly what's going on. This is how it's affecting your life. Um, this is what you need. People are like, yeah, of course, that's exactly what's been happening, right? Like I didn't even know until I talked to you. Now I understand what's happening, right? Because you're uncovering by asking these questions because you're so clear about what problems you solve and what you do and how you can fix it, right? So that's the key. So anyway, clients will go like, that's absolutely right. Yes, that's true. Sign me up, right? Like I need to hire you right away so I can get that result instead of, all these like coping lines, like, oh, it's not that bad, you know? And it's like, well, the last few days haven't been so bad, but the last five years have been like terrible, right? They, they, they just have to normalize the situation, right? Because what else are they going to do? if They don't know the solution to it, right? And, you know, they've just gone and maybe it's gone on for so long that they've just learned to live with the problem, okay? So people tend to cover up the real deal and then rationalize it. So if you can get them to the truth by peeling away all those layers, they can gain certainty with you. Make sense? Okay. Because um, those rationalizations, like, you know, even though it helps us through the day, it's like, as time goes on, it's going to eventually, you know, affect what's going on in your lives, positive or negative, right? Whatever that is, right? But if there's a problem, it's probably negative, right? So it's okay um, you know, that it will maybe, you know, or they just like, they rationalize that maybe it'll eventually work out somehow, right? The pain will go away soon, or it's been okay for the last couple of days, but it's been chronic for five years. And, you know, but what they're really doing is, is it's just keeping us stuck with the problem, right? Like when you start rationalizing, but it's like, what else, what else can they do? Right. Until the now they've found, just suddenly found you that you can fix it, but they've been living it, with it for so long or dealing with it for so long. Right. Like sometimes it gets to that point where it's just like, they just start rationalizing it. And then it can, anyway, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole, but um, so, you know, go ahead and have that conversation that everybody else in their life might just be afraid to have with them too. Cause at the end of the day, right? Your prospect knows that there's a problem. Like they know there is, right? Otherwise they wouldn't have taken the time to, um, to come on with you, right? Like they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have reached out to you or, or read through your content or whatever. Like they wouldn't have hopped on a call with you in the first place if they didn't think there was a problem. So they're there for a reason. So now it's your job to like uncover like what's really going on. So as the mentor, um, or coach or expert or, you know, of the service that you're providing, um, you can't lead someone to their desired results if they don't acknowledge that there's a problem in the first place that's, that's affecting their lives, you know, possibly ruining their lives, right? For most people, when they come face to face with their problems, they'll decide to do something about it, no matter what the cost is, if, depending on how it's affecting them, right? If it's, and, and how, you know, 
it, they don't, if they don't want it to go on any longer, right? But again, there has to be that, that um, okay, what is that going to look like if you don't? What's that cost, right? For most people, it's like they need to have, they need to weigh out the cost, right? And this brings me now into the third reason why you're getting objections is people don't know that you care, okay? I mean, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing if you didn't care. You'd just go do something else probably, right? I mean, why did you choose this? Why did you choose what you're doing, right? Um, instead of going to do something else, you probably really care, right? You don't get into the service business, into a service business to serve people, right? Um, if you don't care about people. So the reason they don't, they don't know um, that you care is because your focus is on yourself and not on them. Does that make sense? So even though you do care and you're like, oh, look at all my great credentials and all these things, because you do want to help them, right? It just doesn't come across that way. So it shows, you know, um, everywhere too. It shows in your posts, it shows in your marketing, it shows in the way you do calls. So it shows up everywhere until you're really clear about this. And people immediately know if you're um, sincere, you know, sincerely concerned um, and interested, or if you're just in it for the money too. Okay. So that, that comes across as well. So this means that you need to always show up with integrity, integrity, authenticity, right? Because the goal is not to make a sale, but to get them to their truth so that you can help them. Okay, so that you can help them make the right decision for moving forward. Um, when I get on the call with potential clients, um, I always want them to get so much value, whether they decide to enroll or not. Okay, even today's call, okay, she got on, she's like, I straight up, first thing, um, I'm not going to enroll with you because she's invested 13000 in another coach. And I was just like, that's totally fine. You know, you can enroll. Maybe you don't enroll with me today. Maybe you enroll with me two months from now, two years from now. I'm here to find out what's going on. I mean, you booked a call with me for a reason. You signed up, you know, and uh, to my valuable free offer, which talks about like you need clients, right? Um, for a reason. So what's going on? Like, there's obviously a problem. So let's talk. Let's just see where you're at. See if I can point you in the right, right direction. And, you know, I just listened to what she had to say. And, um, you know, she just at the end of the call was like, you know what, I, I just feel like I need to because she's already invested like 13,000 in this other program, I really need to um, explore that. And I said, awesome. I hope you know that today's call like, shed some light on what's happening for you, what you're missing, what you need, go back to that coaching program and ask them if they provide those things for you, right? Because whether you work with me or anyone else, right? These are the things that you need to get you from where you are today to where you're gonna go, okay? Um, and if, if, they, if they don't offer those things for you, then I'm gonna be here two months from now, two years from now, and you know when you're ready, when you're ready to fix whatever's not working, I'm here for you, okay? So anyway, when I get on the call with them, like I just, I always just give them so much value, whether they decide to enroll with me or not, because you know, if at any point in the conversation, the person on the other end just feels that you're just like trying to sell them and you're not really there caring, right? Um, then they're just out, right? So the buyers of today, they want to work with people who are genuine and who care and who aren't fake, right? Like, so there's so much fakeness in the world right now, right? It's just like, God, I just want someone to give it to me straight. Tell me the truth, right? Um, so it's important that, that they see that there is something different about you, okay? Because you sincerely care right? Because if you really sincerely care, it's going to radiate out of you naturally, right? So of course, you have problems as a service-based entrepreneur, like you need the money, um, you know, so because you need to make sales in order to keep going, right? I mean, you're a business owner, but, um, you know, but just coming from that place, it just goes a lot easier. It's like, it's a lot, um, it just, it just naturally happens, right? So what I do is, you know, to prepare myself um, for the call is I leave all the personal problems aside first, right? And I just focus solely on the client, like reminding myself that my obligation is to help them to get to the truth so that they can finally start solving their problem from the root, OK? 
Okay. They come to me with all this surface stuff, typically, right? Don't you, you know, it's like nobody's ever gotten to the root of what's really going on and why, you know, they're like, oh, I don't have any clients. I don't have any money, you know? And it's like, well, you don't have any money because of all these other things that are happening. Cause this isn't, you know, this has been happening for a long time, right? And it's like, you don't have any money. It's not that you don't have any money because you don't have any clients. It's you don't have any money because of this reason, the client not having the clients and all this other stuff is just the symptom stuff. So what's really going on, right? Um, so just don't be afraid to, to get on those calls and have real conversations with people, okay? They just need to hear your, your truth, right? Um, they need to be they need to be heard and understood so that you can effectively help them and and you want people to sign up because they know that that there's a problem and that they are certain that you can help them solve it okay and this sets up the stage for for the ideal working relationship okay so if you want to learn more about um this highly effective strategy okay that gets people enrolling like clockwork right then comment objections and I or someone else from my team will get back to you with a direct message, okay? And we can have that conversation. Like I said, like I offer these calls and we really get to the root problem of like, what's really happening? What's really stopping you from hitting your financial goals or the impact that you wanna make in, um, in your life, right? With all these people that you're trying to help. Um, and what, um, you know, like, it's a free 45 minute conversation where we can just really get to the root cause of what's going on. Okay. And again, if you keep getting objections, um, here are the top three reasons. Okay. You need to be aware of to work on. Okay. People are not clear on the problem that you solve. Okay. And you might not be either, right. People are not certain that you can help them. Okay. And number three is people don't know that you care. Okay. Those three things need to be, um, present or need to be um, communicated effectively on each call. Otherwise, they're just gonna come up with those objections. Make sense? All right, so hopefully this has been helpful for you all. I will see you again next week. I'm here every Thursday at three, um, unless I'm sick or traveling um, typically. But yeah, in my Facebook uh, Business Growth Blueprint group, three o'clock Pacific time on Thursdays every week, I have great, um, these great um, conversations. You can come in, you can ask questions and um, otherwise you can see the replays and they will also be on YouTube after the fact. But if you want to come in live and if you want to check out all any of the other past Facebook lives and I've got all kinds of free training and stuff in the group, it's the Business Growth Blueprint on Facebook. Um, and I'm here. All right. So hopefully that's super helpful. And yeah, feel free to comment in below um, objections or any questions you've got. Oh, and I just noticed I've got a new comment. Okay, good. Yay. Awesome. Okay, no new comments. Um, so have a great week and I will see you next week. Take care.